Hello and welcome to the Two Robbies podcast, your destination for in-depth discussion and analysis of the Premier League and the Champions League. I'm Robbie Musto, he's Robbie Earl, and here are today's topics. Arsenal stunned by Sean Dyche's Everton. Harry Kane scores his 267th and record Spurs goal in a statement victory against Manchester City. Liverpool embarrassed at Wolves. 10-man Manchester United see out win versus Crystal Palace. Newcastle United held at home to West Ham in a 1-1 draw. And big spending Chelsea failed to impress against Fulham. That's what we've got coming up in today's episode. And Musty, let's not forget about Premier League Pick'em and your chance to win $50,000. Play Premier League Pick'em for free and you can become the next big winner. Download the NBC Sports Predictor app today, available in the App Store or Google Play Store. All right, Mr Musto, I, I think we'll, we'll, we'll kick off with the first game from the weekend. It was well an- highly anticipated. Everton in trouble, new manager Sean Dyche in charge against high-flying Arsenal who were looking to push ahead and, and get to that coveted Premier League title. Didn't quite go to plan, my friend, at, at uh, Goodison Park. Mm. Uh, Arsenal come up, Everton came up with a 1-0 win. Um, what was your takeaway? What was your overriding thoughts on that one? Well, I think, I think you know, of course, um, it's a huge game for Arsenal, but it was a massive game for Everton, Rob, wasn't it? And you got a new manager in Sean Dyche mm. that I think we both agreed was a good decision to, to put Sean Dyche in at Everton. Um, the right man for an incredibly difficult job. Everybody sees that. And the protest, by the way, still came before the game a little bit afterwards as well. Um, but what he did with the team, with the same players that Frank Lampard yeah. had, was pretty stark and, and, and very effective. And, you know, we saw the best of Everton. There's, a, there's, a, there's a, such a great side mm. of Everton, a great side of this support, which now is, of course, very, very upset and disappointed with the way the club's been run, and rightly so. But right now, I, I, I got to think, Rob, that they feel they've got a guy that totally understands them, understands the club to a certain degree. You know, he obviously he doesn't, you know, he never, mm. he's never been there before for a period of time. Yeah. Um, but he's the right guy. And that, that spirit, that energy, uh, what they brought to this game is something that, that he'll want every week, Rob. Mm. And that, that's going to be the hardest bit. But there's no question, yeah. picked a strong physical team, particularly in the middle of the park. Decore played, mm. uh, Anana and uh, Jusagana Gay. Um, and yeah. I am a little surprised they won, but I'm not surprised by the reaction to him, the type of performance it was, and, and what he got out of those players. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, I, I was watching the game and, and, you know, you see him being introduced to the fans, you see him on the sideline, Rob, you see, you know, he, he's, I wouldn't say basic because that, that does does him a disservice, but he, I think he keeps things at pretty even. I think the players have done the work in the week. He talked about, you mm. know, probably putting two or three things in their head. They were well organised, they tactically brilliantly set up that five in midfield to, mm. to nullify... Um, you know, Arsenal's passing threat in there that never really got going, never really picked up a rhythm. Um, he just feels, Rob, to me, but my, my, my first thought was, as I, as I see him standing there, is he's a really good fit for this football club. Yeah. One, Rob, that I remember the, be- the best of Everton that we've seen in, let's say, more recent years was, was David Moyes' Everton, who you knew what you were going to get in terms of effort, physicality, hard work, and they had talented players sprinkled along there that, that, that did well. The year before that, Rob, if you remember, and, and I think I played certainly against you, maybe may play against the Joe Royals kind of teams, a bit of the dogs of war, where, mm. again, you knew what you were going to get from an Everton team. Nick, Nick Henry, I get the Mil- Mike Milligan midfield. Yeah, midfield yeah, players, yeah. All, all that lot, mm. wasn't it? They, they had, you know, and, 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 you know, they had tough players yeah. and they had players who'd been at the club, but it just felt a good fit. I get the sense that Sean Dyche is going to be able to bring that. Now, he talked about it, and it was a great interview you guys did with him after the game about that was a performance I needed for the start, but it is only the start, and mm. things have to come. Mm. I just also think, that Rob, with, with Sean Dyche, that he's, his, he's got the right personality for this football club. Yeah. Everton's a special football club. At the moment, it's in the shadow of, of Liverpool and has been for a number of years. There was time... You know, way back when under Howard Kendall, that they were setting the standards and 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 above Liverpool. But these are these are these are way of being at this football club. These are personality. These are humour. These are these other things that are important to this football club. 
I think Sean Dyche gets that, Robin. I loved his little phrase, and I think he mentioned it again when you boys uh, in, in, in Bex interviewed him, it, it, which his line was, minimum requirement, maximum effort. Mm. And it's just a very Sean Dyche thing. And, mm. and, and I was laughing to myself because I said, I could imagine Sean Dyche taking all the boys down to the uh, tattoo parlour on a Thursday afternoon and going, put that on, everybody's going to have this across <laughs> their, their arm. Minimum requirement, maximum, maximum effort. effort. Yeah. Yeah. Because... It, it, it's, that's what is demanded. And, and it was interesting, Rob, because it was a very different win to, I would say, most, if not any of the wins I saw under Frank. It was done in a different way, with a different style, with a tactical organisation that actually you know, gave them a base to get the result from. It, it's hard not to compare as it was before. And I and again, maybe wrongly yeah. me, but I do look back at Frank Lampard leaving Chelsea and the, the next manager coming in and mm. with the same group making quite a big improvement. And I, I think we might see that again here. Um, the hardest thing yeah. I would think, Rob, isn't it? And and you know what's funny about football, right? And I, and I, and I know you understand that there's that... When you say that you give 100% in a game, right? That 100% is only available sometimes, and, and I'm not going to go on and say 110% and all that rubbish. 100% is 100%. Mm. Now, Everton played at yeah. pretty much 100%. Now, it's hard to do that all the time. Sometimes to get to 100, right, yeah. and to ring that bell of 100%, there's got to be something on the game. There's got to be yeah. something in the stadium, some big cup night. or so. Obviously, new manager sometimes brings you to that mm. point. Or when you've got to be Palace at home, Rob, like Everton last year to stay in the Premier League. Something yeah. takes the players yeah. to that extra little few percent that you don't really see. Mm. Now, is it... Rob, and I'll throw it back to you, that, that Everton have to find yeah. that last 2 or 3% to be at their very best. And if they drop into 90% effort instead of 100 or 98, mm. then the wins won't come. Yeah. And they, because history says with this group, you know, last season, this season, it's been a struggle for them. The only thing you, you, that you be, have to be encouraged about is the signings. And they made some good signings with those centre-backs. Yeah. And I know Gordon's a big loss going and Richardson from last year. Um, what do you think about that, Rob? Like, it, it's just that, that, yeah, that it's just, there's always point. an extra bit for somebody in, in, a, in a unique circumstance. Mm. There's a bit more that players can find deep, deep down. Well, I hear your point. It's a really good point. And, and, and I'll sort of semi-throw it back to you. But I think in some respects, Rob, that hundred percent is is about what's inside the player, who you are, what what drives you, what motivates you. Now, what I would say with Sean Dyche is, he was pretty much for the majority of his time at Burnley getting hundred percent out of Burnley players, week in week out. Got yeah, him into Europe to it. one time, close or to it. pretty yeah. safe in, yeah. in the league, close to. You know what I mean? Close, so now the point I'll make for for Everton, and, and you mentioned I, I looked at Decore. I looked at Idrissi Garner Gay, I looked at Anana, mm. I looked at DCL, I, I, I look at, at, at McNeil. Do you know what, Rob? These are better, these are better players than he had at Burnley. Yeah. These are step up in player and the players he's brought in. So the combination of him being able to seemingly know how to touch that button at Burnley to get close to 100 or more and have the quality of, of talent where individuals might have days, you know, the front line might be, yeah. be on fire one weekend and, and score through, you know. I think that combination is what get, makes me think we will get more performances at a certain level mm. because I think Sean Dyche can, knows how to bring that. Puts more importance, he's on, it, it puts more and, importance and, on that. Yeah. And that, and yeah. that aspect. And, and I think that's his experience. Yeah. I think, you know, when we, and we, again, with comparisons to Frank, and we all, people know what we, we think of Frank, the player, the man, mm. the manager who's still got to go through some difficult times. Sean Dyche's experience stands him in a different place than Frank Lampard. I when just, he stands in front of a group of players and says something and does something, Rob, yeah. I think it stands him in a better set. Forget all Frank's goals and caps and trophies and all that. It, you're talking about. 20 players in a dressing room who are listening to a manager who have to take it and who have to react to that. Sean Dyche does it better than Frank mm. Lampard. Yeah, and, and that just, as we finish off the conversation on them, Rob, it, it does, you know, when mm. the weekend results happen, we take a little reflection of what's happened the weekend and we pick an underappreciated performer. Yeah. And Sean Dyche wins it for me this weekend. You know, I know there's players you could pick out in this game or in other games as well, but Sean yeah. Dyche... Maybe a little underappreciated the job we did at Blackburn, uh, to, sorry, at Burnley, 
and you know you you mm. naturally underappreciate how good they were. We're seeing a brilliant example now playing out at Newcastle United with Eddie Howe. Did a great job at Bournemouth. Was kind of underappreciated. You remember the last bit, the negative bit, the relegation. Or I mean, Sean Dyke didn't get relegated, but was close to it. And you kind of uh, is he is he ready for a different club? So. Fair play to him. He's shown so far, and we know there's a long way to go, that he's done it. So I want to give underappreciated to Sean Dyche. I think he probably has been over the years for a tremendous job. Now, let's switch it to Arsenal, Rob. Um, you know, on paper, it's, I know the timing was bad mm. for them to go to Everton, uh, to go to some park yeah. when there was potential for there to be a good atmosphere and to there be almost a reset, which it was. How much, and I actually asked yeah. um, Mikel Arteta, and we were so lucky to get both managers after this game as an interview direct. Oh, it was brilliant. It was I mean, it's brilliant. so yeah. amazing. I can't, I, I love it, because it's like, oh, right, I'm going to get to ask him a, a yeah. question Next live. Level. Like, what yeah. I, what I, and I, um, I said about what disappointed him most about that. And I didn't, I, you know, I, I said to him, I know you'd have prepared for that, because that's the easy question, right? It's like, you know, were you ready yeah, for that? Yeah. Of course he's ready for it. He played for Everton. He knows what Goodison Park mm. can be like. But mm. I asked him what was he's most disappointed with. And he didn't really kind of point to physicality or defensive side or defending the set piece better where the goal came from. He said, disappointed in our on our attacking phase, in our final third. Attacking, when we had opportunities. Side, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, what did mm. you... What, what disappointed you yeah, most about Yeah, it was an Arsenal? interesting... Was it... It was an interesting response for Mikel, who, listen, they'd, they'd lost one game up to this point, Rob. Yeah. Um, I didn't think that... I think what happened, in, in many respects, the way that Everton was set up and the, the five across the midfield and they'd slowed them down, didn't create that much. So, Saka and Martinelli were not real threats. And Ketty had a couple of looks, had a good look early that probably should have done better. But he didn't create an awful lot. They weren't, there wasn't that flow to the game. Um... So I kind of understood what Mick. I think Mikel Arteta, you know, all the work they do, the build up and the the, the playing out the back and the diamond mm. in the midfield and the thing mm. is to get the ball in certain areas to create mm. chances to get mm. it to those wide, wide players, players to get yeah. the overlap. Yeah. So, I, I, yeah, I think because he didn't get any of that, Rob, that was a bit that kind of yeah. oh, that wasn't really us today because we didn't get we didn't get any of that mm. stuff that, that's got us to this position so far. Mm. So it was an interesting answer because I think other managers would have been like, you know, defensively we didn't, so we didn't, have, you know, we didn't go like for like with the strength set pieces and all that kind of thing, which obviously changed the game. But it's interesting that his his sort of cue was towards the attacking areas of the pitch where they weren't re they didn't really come alive. We had a little preview of this game. Me and Danny Higginbotham was on the show this weekend on the Friday. Mm. And, I, and I, I was wrong. I basically said, you know what? This is going to be a difficult game. It's going to be a good atmosphere at Goodison Park. But I'm confident that mm. Arsenal's slick movement and their great football will still find a way yeah. to play around the pressure and the energy and the physicality mm. as it, as it, as it uh, yeah. turned out. They weren't. It didn't quite work out. And Everton's, no, that no, side of it was brilliant no. for them. So I guess that was where I was a little mm. disappointed. And I shouldn't be, and I'm not that disappointed. You can't go through. You're going you're gonna to no. lose games. You're gonna, no. You can't do it every single week. Correct. It's another, it's a little stumble. It's a little blip. It's a little bump in the road. It's another chance for those young players to mm. learn, Rob. And there's been a few of these uh, last year, late on, yeah. where yeah. learning experience, disappointment, ah, they failed, like, but learning experience. Mm. It's another little learning experience. Now, it's, everything's in the reaction of it. And I think um, another answer that he gave yeah. to us was, I love these players even more now. As if, like, I know yeah. that they're going to come yeah, back yeah. and they're going to want it and they're going to react mm. um, in their next game. So you can't win them all. It wasn't a yeah. great day for Arsenal. It uh, was Bad timing. But, yeah, yeah. It, was, it, was, it was no question disappointing to actually lose the game as well. I, I agree. I, 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 again, you know, it's a time to love them more. I thought it was an interesting mm. line. And based, Rob, let's just remember, based on they kicked off the, the midweek, the, the weekend's games and had that defeat. And to be honest, based on what's happened as we sit here yeah. after the last game of the weekend, it yes. hasn't quite been as bad. No, it hasn't. He can go in tomorrow, Rob, and say, listen, yeah. guys, by the way, we yeah. didn't have a good day, but look what's yeah. happened. And we're yeah. still five points clear. And, you know, so yeah. there's a lot of, you know, interest to talk. Next two games, Rob, coming up. Brentford away. Man uh, Brentford at home, Manchester City at home. Mm. Two games that will have a, you know, Brent uh, Brentford in decent shape, a derby that you can't take lightly, and then the City games, oh, which gosh. are going to be key to possibly, yeah. you know, where, where the title could end up. So, mm. a couple of interesting weeks. And I, I, I just read it, I was reading this morning, Rob, a couple of things after the game, you know, a bit of Arteta stuff, looking, listening to a couple of interviews. One thing he said, which, which 
thought was quite an interesting line from him, getting a little bit of insight to maybe how it works. He says, the big thing I've got to get make sure is right by next Saturday when we face Brentford is our emotional, what did you see, our emotional spirit. Hmm. We need to have our emotional spirit right for the Brentford game. Like, maybe can't be too down because yeah, of the really. defeat. Maybe can't be over-wanting it because, yeah. like, we've lost. Yeah, just kind of making sure our emotional spirit, which I thought was another interesting insight mm. into how he works and how he is with his players. Mm. But, yeah, uh, you know, great weekend. A little tester, not as bad as it could have been, certainly from Arsenal's point of view. Mm. Uh, great start for, for Sean Dyche and Everton. And, and quite rightly, I, I just want to say, before we finish, uh, he was on my list for underappreciated, Rob. Mm. I think he gets a raw deal with his style yeah. of football. I think yeah. he's a bit of a, known as a you know modern-day Sam Allardyce, Tony Pulis. I think he, people might be slightly surprised at, at what he can do with, with the better You've, you've always of, said that, Rob, player, yeah. haven't it? To be fair to you, yeah. you've always, always, always said that. Yeah. 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 OK. But, you know, let, let's see. Uh, yeah. Let's see. But good, good start for Dyche, good start for Everton. Let's move it on, my friends, because uh, we spent a little time on that one. Let's take it to today's game, where it was probably the big game of the weekend. Tottenham at home to Man City. Uh, it's a Tottenham team in the new, uh, new Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. That City haven't won, hadn't scored, scored. before oh, today. I know. Same conti- the same continued. <laughs> haven't won, haven't scored, Rob. Spurs win one nil. If if you could if you could write down the way that Spurs were gonna score, you'd probably have, have half got it. Nick a ball in possession, tune yeah. it over, quick yeah. transition. If you could write down the man who's gonna get the goal, yeah. you'd have probably said the Prince himself at home, two hundred and sixty seven goals, basically all time record. Um Great day for Spurs. Did what they needed to do. Got a good win. Let's let's start with Spurs, Rob. How important was that? Keeps them in the race. No Antonio Conte. A little, um, you know, tip of the hat to is it Christian Stellini, his assistant now, who, who's been on the yeah. sideline. He steered them to a win in Marseille in the Champions League. Remember they had a big game then. I, I think Conte was banned for that one. Yeah. And then another win today in a big game to keep them top four. So yeah. you know. Always good to know that your assistant can come and, and do things. But mm. great win for Spurs, Rob. Sort of closes the gap top of the table and all of a sudden gives them a, 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 a sniff into that top four again. You know, just just when you think with Tottenham, like they disappoint and it's too this and it's too that yeah. and it's too defensive and they, they, they starve on the young player. They put a, the forward players. They um, it's, It was totally different today, Rob. Totally different. I mean, I, I was really surprised. Mm. I thought they looked a really good balanced team today. There was none of that dropping yeah, back yeah. and sitting so far back and it being boring and quiet and the fans not being into the game. The goal was a great example and we did a little breakdown of it because this is kind of unusual Spurs to be that high up. Eric Dyer, Rob, was almost in the attacking yeah. third pressing. Everybody yeah. pressed really, really well for that and I think I don't think it, it caught City out in terms of surprise, um, but it was different. And, you know, of course, Harry Kane's movement is really clever movement. He scores again. And we'll, we'll talk individually a little later about Harry Kane. Um, yeah, yeah. But it was a good yeah, yeah. performance, Rob. Front foot football, like good, good, sometimes defensively strong, sometimes take the game. You know, sometimes yeah. they play a little bit. Sometimes they, they, they press a little high in there and they give up that space behind that they're always worried about. Um, it was really good Tottenham, you know, and, and Antonio Conte must sit there, you know, he's, I think he's back home um, just recovering from his surgery. And in his Italy, bladder. isn't he? Yeah, in, yeah, back at home in Italy and stuff. And he must have been very proud of the way that the coaches handled the game and the way that it turned out. I just I just want to see that all the time. A couple of players I want to point out, Rob, in terms of I thought were, were excellent. Pierre-Emile Hoiber again. I mean, that's nothing... I mean, mm. you know, he's that guy that... Yeah. I, 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 it's a similar position that I played, right? So I'll always mention when he's... Mm-hmm. had a great game because sometimes people won't notice it but of course he, he made the interception for the goal there was various other opportunities he stole the ball so many times in midfield yeah. for those turnovers I thought he was very very good and a player that I was I mean I don't I don't think's great Emerson Royal what a game had Emerson Royal had a game yeah, what there, a game yeah. Was, yeah. what a game he had at right Jack. wing back <laughs> Uh, and we know Pedro Paulo Jack Grealish and Emerson Royal was was, oh. was was a great little match up all day mate great match up all yeah. day yeah yeah, it was. And I, and we know that Pedro Porro, who for me looks like a mm. really, really exciting wing back, 
scores goals, assists regularly from that position yeah, for his previous yeah. teams. Uh, but Emerson Royal, I mean, wow. Like Knowing there's some guy that's, that's just arrived at the club that's going to take your position potentially, mm -hmm. I thought he was very, very good. Christian Romero, a bit of a rush to the blood with the two yellow cards. I mean, he's a crazy man. Yeah, he's, an, he's the most yeah. aggressive defender in the league, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But no, just summing up, um, that's better. That's better Tottenham. I, you know, I think Spurs fans mm -hmm. don't mind a little bit of pragmatism. But there's got to be more yeah. of a, a more of a tilt or a, or, a, or a slant to attacking and being ready to counterattack that we saw in this game. So one of the best performances of, of a Spurs team under the manager for, for quite a while. Yeah, it, it seems like somehow they can find to seem to raise it against the cities and the yeah. like. What I thought, Rob, what, what was noticeable to me was I thought there was a real distinction between the different phases like the, the mid block today which was not quite so deep you know when they pressed for the goal I, I saw a breakdown today where these these six Spurs players against the five City they've almost outnumbered them right. on the block because they were going to go aggressively well that's a risk then Hoy it's a risk, yeah. is, you're right yeah it's, it's a risk but it's a risk going short. with you yeah. know real intention to win the ball back and, and turn it over um, you talked about that Hoy Bear has almost become he's become a number eight Rob from what I thought was a number six who gets it and keeps it neat, mm. neat and tidy. He can get on the end of things now. Shows he, he, he can be involved in scoring goals. I think he's got four Premier League goals and might be four or five Premier League assists now this mm. season. Mm. Uh, Emerson Royal, totally agree. Written him down, just said, you know, him and Jack. And I thought he came out on top. Uh, particularly liked him. I just thought there was a, was a nice change of speed to Spurs yeah. today. Yeah. When they did go and when they did feel, it looked like they were going with real intent and danger. And, a couple of balls came across the box, a couple of other opportunities um, where they, they made it difficult for City. Mm. Um, are we going to talk about the great man, uh, yeah, the talk Prince, right now, now talk before about, talk we get on to Man City? It's probably, it's probably right, about, about right now, isn't it? Because, well, yeah, he, he's a new king of, of <laughs> Tottenham Hotspur. 267 goals uh, to beat the great Jimmy Greaves. Um, it, it was such a, a, a cane goal, Robin, and I think you mentioned it on, on the... Um, on, on the TV today, and I think you, you've just alluded to there. His movement for that goal mm. is, 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 is a classic example of any young mm. centre forward. As Huybert, as the, 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 the steel mm. starts to come, they win mm. the ball, Huybert's looking to poke it. Watch his body movement, mm. Rob. Mm. It's the classic mm. where you open up your mm. body on to the give inside, the, yeah. the guy space to pass into on the inside, but you never lose sight of the ball. That's a big thing, mm. what I would say mm. to kids. I've, I've worked in coaching, we've done a little mm. bit, and People turn like full 60 there and you don't see, you, you lose the ball for a right. second as you're turning, yeah. then it comes back in your vision. If you watch what Harry Kane does, he opens his body so he's never not facing the ball. Mm. So he's never not prepared for whatever pass comes to him that he can take and one touch find the back of that. That was the, the brilliance of it. The, the finish yeah. is what we knew. The brilliance of preparation before yeah. that is. High I end. It's really end difficult. Score. Well, I, I got another replay in there to try and show that people on our on our broadcast. Like the second replay mm. was, I, I, yeah. I, and it could happen so quick, doesn't it? Replays come through so quickly, and we haven't got too much time. Mm. But uh, yeah, I mean, like it's not that's not natural to turn that way. It's more natural to go off your right no, foot no. and you turn away. Correct. Like, turn and then you turn around. and then you miss the you, you lose sight of the ball for probably half lose a second. Lose sight of the ball for so, a little bit. Yeah. So to turn yeah. this way and push off your left foot. Whilst making it, it, it yeah. yeah. I mean, again, it's a little detail, but um, God, what an important detail that is, and something top, he's top, obviously. Top, it's top, a great top. indication of how yeah, he's top, learned top. the game and been coached really, really well. And mm. um, yeah, absolute ledge, absolute legend. I mean, an amazing amount of goals, um, particularly this year, by the way, Rob. When the team, you know, have been a bit defensive-minded, but to be that yeah. consistent mm. from at the start, where he's, he get pushed out on loan a couple of times, Rob. I remember he went to Leicester and a couple of other clubs. Uh, yeah. He went on loan at the start of his career. He went to Leighton Orient, Rob. Leighton Orient. He, he it was, late, yeah. Leighton Orient, yeah. You know, so, Orient. And to come back and do um, this is phenomenal. Incredible. I mean, I, I just quickly, Rob, and, and I think you, you've known so just some, some of our listeners, and, and, you know, I had the fortune. 2014, Spurs are up in Seattle. They're doing a, a tournament. We get a chance to go up. I get a call from our boss, um, Pierre Moussou. Would I go up to Seattle and, and spend a bit of time with the, with the Spurs squad? So, you know. Perfect. You go up, you see the, the squad. It was, uh, I think it was Pochettino's first season in charge. Talked to Brad Friedel and a couple of others. Spurs are doing a attacking drill. It was Adebayor and Saldana were the two main strikers. And they were doing the balls in, turning, hit it, trying to hit the target, trying to think. I've got to be honest, 
between the two of them, Adib, um, Adebayor and, and Soldano, they probably hit the, 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 the target once. I mean, they were, they were really bad at it. Behind the goal, Rob, running to fetch the balls was a young wow. Aus, wow. Uh, Spurs player called Harry Kane. Mm. Was running behind the goals and catching the balls and throwing them back to the coach. And then maybe 20 minutes after the session, he came in and did a little bit of finishing himself. And, and I remember Brad Friedel, we give Brad credit, said to me, this kid's got something. He said, well, look at his technique. And, he, and, and even then you could see, well, this is 2013-14. Mm. And since then, he's gone on to become Spurs all-time record scorer. Just, you know, I'll, I'll give our viewers a little insight to a conversation we had with Alan Shearer at the Fan Fest, where mm. Alan was saying to us, Rob, wasn't he, that he fears his record to, to as long as Kane stays in the country... He thinks Harry yeah. Harry will beat his record, become yeah. the all-time record goal scorer. I mean, two sixty from lovely. from yeah. those humble beginnings, Rob. Two sixty, yeah, it, mm. it's incredible where he is. And do you know what? I, and, and I know we, we might be going on a little bit longer, but I just want to get this out. He was very close to my underappreciated player of the week. Yeah, and why I say that is, he's he. When we talk of football greats, and he, and she is, is is quite rightly up there, and Thierry Henry in Premier League terms, and then we talk about others. I don't think Harry Kane ever get, gets mentioned in those terms. Maybe he's not quite as pleasing on the eye as some. He, he, his goals, maybe some will say, oh, I could have scored that goal. You know, he, he's in the right place at the right time. He, he, he's not a dribbler where he, he's leaving people on the ground and, and mm. Cruyff turning and all mm. that. Mm. I just feel, Rob, like there's a bit of underappreciation about what this guy has done and is continuing to do. And I think it'll be... Only at the end of his career, only when we see the numbers, only when we see the goals that people are going to say, God, he, he's, a, he's a great, he's a legend. I, I know exactly what you mean. And, you know, to be honest, a couple of years ago, I remember sort of we had a conversation in the studio, I think, about, is he world-class? Is Harry Kane a world-class striker? Mm, and mm. I thought, and I ummed and ahed about it. I said, what he is, is yeah. a world-class finisher. He's a world-class world finisher, finisher yeah, because his heading, his yeah. left foot, yeah. his right foot, he's a world-class. Mm. But like, you're, like you know, I, yeah. I guess in, even in my head, I, my, my mind of a world-class striker is a, you know, is a, is a, is a, yeah. is a, is a skillful and the step-overs and the Ronaldos and the Brazilian Ronaldos and, you know, all, these players that can do amazing things with yeah. the ball and yeah. skillful and create. And he isn't quite that guy, but he's still, you know, given yeah. that longevity, given the type of goals he scores, he is a world-class striker. Right now, of course, he's a world-class yeah, striker absolutely. when you look at number nines around the world. Uh, and it goes down to your definition of what's world-class, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, you're right to mention that, Rob. And I, and I, and it's, I did think about him too, but I thought, well, he kind of he's getting a lot of appreciation today, getting that goal. So, <laughs> but I know what you mean. And, um, yeah. and just yeah. the last thing on yeah, that, Rob. Yeah, I wanted to just to put it yeah. out there. And the last thing, Rob, in terms of a little anecdote, you remember when we went to the Spurs training yeah. ground a few years ago? And, you know, no oh, surprise. Yeah, yeah, and this yeah, isn't yeah. anything yeah. Is, is crazy mm. um, unusual. But as you'd expect, Harry Kane... Last one off the training We're ground, the shooting, 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 mm. free kicks, free kicks, free kicks. Remember doing it with Christian Eriksen? They were taking in turns of because yeah, Eriksen was, was the that, taker, yeah. but Kane was the on and on. They? Yeah, and, mm. and Kane wanted to yeah. practice and practice and practice. So yeah, between that story of running after balls and and being on the training ground, that's how you get to to be great. And um, what a lovely yeah. guy too, mate. What a lovely guy. Yeah, and um, yeah, who absolutely. did I ask? I asked. Um, Gary Cahill. So we had Gary Gary Cahill at the Fan Fest in um, Universal Studios, yeah. and I um, we're in the green room and stuff. And I said, "Oh, you know, Harry Kane," because we're talking about Spurs watching Spurs game, and you know, you play with him with England. You know, what's he like? And basically, yeah. his line was, "He's just a great pro. He's just a great professional in yeah. all in all aspects. A very serious guy, but a great pro." And I think great pros, great people do well often, and. Um, it's great to see somebody like him that's not flashy or loudmouthed or, you know, massive ego. Yeah. That it's humble and uh, Driving, yeah. yeah, fair play to him. Um, but let's switch it. Switch it to Man City, my friend. What's going on with Man City? What's going on with Pep? Um, it's a very good question. Something isn't right, my friend. Mm. Something is not right at that football club. I mean, four losses already this season, which is just not like City. Um, <laughs> The choice of first 11 with the likes of Laporte, Diaz, Gundogan, Kevin De Bruyne on the bench. Not sure what's go going on, Rob. The Cancelo yeah. out of the club in the manner yeah. that it was and the speed that it was. 
doesn't quite something doesn't quite feel right, Rob. Mm. And even after the game, I mean, the last time we 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 saw Pep was proper fired up when they came back four two against uh, Spurs. I think it was, wasn't it? And he talked yeah. about you know about the team and expectancy and all that stuff. I thought it was a bit flat today. I thought it was a bit flat after the game. Um, something's not quite right there. The football isn't isn't quite at the level we've known. It, it, that clean possession, that exploiting of spaces, and you know, is not there. I heard you, you, uh, back talk to, to you and Danny about um, that kind of thing, and whether Holland is. People are suggesting maybe Holland is a problem. He's got twenty five goals, but is he is he giving enough? Are they a different team? Not totally convinced mm, that's the, not, the sole yeah. reason. Mm. Um, uh, I think there's a number of things. I think these. I think football clubs have rhythms and have you know and and and, and they're just out of rhythm at the moment, Rob. They're just out of rhythm. Mm. Um, some of the best players are not playing to their level. Um, some of their football is not at the speed and intensity that really hurts you and really opens you up. Uh, so teams have a chance to stay in games. Um, and listen, the the big lad has got 25 goals, and if you keep serving him the right kind of service, he continues to score goals. But there is no guarantee this year that that's going to win you the title. When, when you pick Harland and you bring him into the team, um, you've got yeah. to do your very best to play to his strengths. And I think we've seen it when they've done mm -hmm. it brilliantly this year. We've done the breakdowns brilliantly yeah. crosses more crosses into Absolutely. the box and that is going to yeah. affect other people's yeah. goals mm. it's going to affect other people's goals tally because that's different but if you're going to go down this road of, course, yeah. of having this guy then okay we're going to commit to this guy amazing we know he's mm. brilliant at what he does we've got to make sure that we tweak ourselves to be able to get the best out of him and i think we saw that rob early on we totally saw yeah. it then i think it went away yeah, a little bit sure. and then it came back a little bit and mm. i still think they're a little confused it's a little uh it, 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 they can't find the rhythm the new rhythm to consistently yeah, get the best yeah. out of Erlen Haaland. With, with him, yeah. And, and I remember I said yeah. to you, Rob, right at the beginning with him, I said there's the two eyes I worry about with him, with Haaland, about being a superstar. Injuries and involvement. Injury. Injuries mm -hmm. and involvement is what yeah. I thought about. Now, injuries have been pretty good. Been very, very good. Like, he's played loads yeah. of games. But mm -hmm. involvement, yeah, involvement um, is, is still, now and mm -hmm. again, is, a, is an issue. And they've it's got to find a way. It's well, involvement and interesting, about. though, because yeah. it... Well, I wouldn't say last... I just think when he scores hat-tricks and when we've seen at West Ham early on in the season and he got, I think, a couple of goals and we're like, wow. He does, he's not that involved in the game, Rob. He wasn't particularly involved. It's not like he's ever 40-odd touches and, you know, he's not Harry Kane linking the play, buying passes, joining in. He can do... He's very basic with that, can come off, can get it from A to B, but then he gets himself in the right spots mm. where it's going to end up at mm. the end. Now, it's interesting. So the other thing I would say on that, and you make the point about uh, Haaland, and we've done again the patented Kevin De Bruyne ball to Haaland. Mm. If you're playing Haaland, Rob, why is Kevin De Bruyne not yeah, in your I side? I know, I know. I mean, is, is, there, is there something bigger going on there? You know, De Bruyne's been named a little bit as, as one, and, you know, the manager's talking about, like, he, he's not been as fit or something as, as he's known, and yeah. I don't know, it just seems like it, it, something isn't quite right, mate. You know, um, just quickly on that Harlem point, I know what you mean, and I, and I don't mean, in, 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 when yeah. I say involvement, I don't necessarily mean zillions of touches, I mean about being the point, yeah. being being involved in going for the ball, being involved in, you okay. know, making the runs. So like, uh, you make yeah. a good point, because he doesn't, it's he's not up. one of those that has to be super mm. involved in the build-up play, but but involved in the game yeah. means active. He's making runs. He's going for balls. He's challenging the back post. Yeah. Anyway, back to mm. back to um, Kevin De Bruyne. I just wonder. I just wonder. Remember when? Remember he kind of got left out and Pep said he's not playing at his level. Remember if, uh, probably a couple of months ago yeah, now he yeah. said he's not playing yeah, at his was, level. Yeah, it was a little bit just after the World Cup that was when he, we just came back. Yeah, and it was like wow. I, I don't think he's been that bad. And then his face today on the bench. Mm. Kevin De Bruyne's face today on the bench yeah. was, mm. you know, and he had that big, Pep had that big snap at the team, didn't he, after they beat Spurs a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, you know. And since, De Bruyne didn't play that day, by the way. Yeah, and since then, Kinsella, maybe there's a bit of a, maybe there's a bit of a, bit of a fallout at the club. Cancelo's end up leaving. De Bruyne's mm. still on the bench, yeah. looks miserable. Yeah. The team don't look, you know, maybe mm. it, it, it's, Summit's just kicked off a little bit. Yeah. 
And there's a and, bit of and, disjointedness. And things happen like that in football clubs. Yeah. Don't, you know, yeah. and, and listen, no one's going to come out and tell the media because you keep it in-house. No one's going to talk about another pro because you, you're mates or you're in the same thing. But these things happen regularly in clubs mm. that we've been in for, you know, and, and, and witnessed. And you have to put a brave face on it, get on. And if you win, Rob, it's things start to go away and people start to get happier. Yeah. When you lose, yeah. and if you continue to lose, it can sometimes get a little bit bigger. Are they not going to win the league, are they? Not based on what we've seen. No, I think it, it look you know, top Arsenal have got every chance mm. to to go on and, and win this league and, and make the most of the opportunity. Yeah, that's four losses now they've had. I think they they lost three of all of last year. You know, and I I, I run the numbers quite regularly. Well, I don't not regularly, but I look back and you don't get champions losing. Well, rarely five or more games. They've lost four uh, now. Uh, uh, let me go back on that because, in fairness to Pep, City, and the group, they could still, Rob, could go they? on an unbeaten run from now to the end of the season. Yeah, they could. They still can do that. They've T- done it tougher, in the past. I, to see I'm that. not saying. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying based on mm. what we've seen so far, but mm, this okay. team is capable of putting three yep. straight wins, building a thing, and then going on. So yeah. I'm not. No, I'm not going right. to quite rule them out no, yet. You're right. I, but um, yeah. you, you know, you, the, the rhythm in that club looks a little bit off. Mm. Listen, we'll wait and see if, if anything starts to seep out or mm. any sort of um, players start to, to voice their unhappiness with things. Mm. But uh, yeah, really interesting scenario. Great win for Tottenham. Great day for Harry Kane. Well done mm. to them. Um, and by the way, can I just say, again, one last word, and, and I shouldn't keep going back. The Harry Kane gets his 267th goal, all-time record. The, the line from Peter Drury was, <laughs> he, he dares and he's done. It's like, just like, wow. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? This, yeah. this guy, it, yeah, it's yeah. like <laughs> incredible, incredible... Yeah. Poet. Use of, yeah, of yeah. you know, fit, finding the right word. To, yeah, wordsmith, absolute wordsmith. Yeah. Peter so Drury. Tap exactly. to, to Peter Drury and, 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 and Graham. OK, mate, let's move it on to a, a team. Another team that things aren't going particularly well and the rhythm's not there and the head, headlights are starting to shine on the manager. Mm. Wolverhampton Wonders 3, Liverpool 0. Uh, this was a 10 o'clock game. Uh, so I, I actually watched this game because I, I, w- I was interested in, in the state of Liverpool and, and where they are. I was interested in Wolves. Uh, I haven't seen too much of them. Lopetegui coming in, hmm. brought in some new players. Look, you know, he's looked like he, he's got, I think, that's three wins in, in this season since, it, since he's come through the door. So already starting to make an impact. Did you get to see much of this one, Rob? And, and obviously hmm. the... the f- the aftermath of, of another de- defeat, I think that's three straight defeats away from home now for Liverpool in the league. Mm. Um, tenth in, in the Premier League, just like incredible mm. turnaround at the football club. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, it's part of the 10 o'clock, wasn't it? And you know what it's like in the studio, Rob, and it wasn't our featured game. There's five games going on at the same time. We have them all mm. on the wall. Of course, we see the highlights and the main incidents, but I don't, yeah. you know, I, I didn't get to see the detail of the game. I'm not sure I needed to see too much yeah. detail, Rob. There's, you see the highlights, you see the goals, you see the face of Jurgen Klopp, you read the reports like I did on the night, go back home and I read the reports of the games and stuff and the big stories. Yeah. Um, God, blimey. It's uh, th- this, this now, when I think the last three away games, they've lost to Wolves 3-0. I think Brighton and Brentford away losses of three get three goals. Right, There's a 3-0 yeah. and a 3-0 and a 3-1 or something, I can't remember. Yeah. But that, like that, that, yeah. that yeah, in, Brentford, in the space yeah. of a few weeks. So that isn't a blip. That, to do that for this club is not a blip. There's obviously um, lots of transition, lots of change needed. Jurgen Klopp looks a bit of a loss at the moment with this squad to try and play their way out of it. I think I think there's two parts here, mate. There's, there's on the field and off the field. On the field start, I think it's probably come to a point, and I said this before, where well, we we got to go back to basics, guys. I'm, I'm sorry, I know we're Liverpool. I know we've got these forwards, and I know we've got Silky Thiago, and I know we've got Trent. And that, but we 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 got we got to stop goals going in here. Build, let's start with a little bit of a foundation again for them. That's what I think's got to happen on the on the field of play and off the field, Rob. And I'll throw it over to you in a second. But this is I think he's had seven years. I think this might be his eighth season, Jurgen Klopp. We know the same yeah. kind of a period yeah, of yeah. years at Dortmund mm-hmm. and at Mines. Mm-hmm. He was ready for new yeah. challenges. Never, yeah. never been fired, I believe. And mm. the question is, I'm no. going to throw to you, given 
what the perception is right now that Fenway Sports Group, the owners of the club, who have done a brilliant job, yeah. by the way, over a, over a, more than a decade, mm -hmm. isn't it? Um, are interested in selling yeah. the club. Cody Gakpo was signed in the January window, but nobody mm -hmm. else of note. Yeah. Um, I don't suspect there's going to be a big investment in the summer to rebuild a major part of the team that's needed. If that's the case, and if Jurgen Klopp feels mm. like, well, this is going to be tough and it's a bit of a scrap again, I've got to try and get them going again without many new players, is, could it be a time yeah. where Jurgen Klopp says, OK, Fenway guys, and it's been a great run, but if I'm not mm -hmm. going to have mm -hmm. new investment into the team, I'm going to uh, maybe I need a new challenge. Mm. Uh, that's a good question. I'm, I'm, I've kind of listen. Uh, we we spent we must spend too much time together because I'm I'm down the same road. Um, I, I, I've kind of written it slightly different, but I thought yeah, based on what we saw yesterday, Rob, this is a bigger. This is ba this this needs bigger surgery than I think we've thought in the past. Um, is there so I wrote? Is there a sort of seven to eight year cycle when you know a Pochettino at, at Tottenham? I go back to a Sean Dyche at, at Burnley. Is there a time, mm. Rob, when it, it, it isn't you know that players become used to it and all that kind of stuff and, and know what the reaction is going to be and you know the words aren't saying as much? Is 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 that part of it? Um, I don't think Jurgen Klopp will be sacked by this group. No, I but don't. I could see a possible mu mutual parting of the ways where they both agree it was one of those things, which, which could be. So the question to answer your question is: Jurgen Klopp's been a great manager of this of Liverpool when they've been great, and he's made them great. And he, and he, Rob, he, his interviews, the, the hugs, the running on the pitch, the connection with the fans, all that's been like. Exemplary, and yes. he's a perfect fit for the football club. Can he and can he be a great manager of an average Liverpool team? No. When things aren't going too well, when you might have to make some big decisions, is he too close to some of these players who've served him so well, who've won that first title in thirty years, that you might have to make some tough calls on Rob, who've got long contracts, but actually now. I watched the game, Rob. So from from the front, and it's a front three of, of very. T when you got Nunez, you've got Salah, and you've got Gagpo. Yeah. Talented European yeah. footballers. Salah, one of the best in the world, doesn't look doesn't look great, Rob. The chemistry and the, the the thing isn't right, isn't right. Doesn't quite work at the moment. So you've got that. You've got a midfield that everybody in the world knows has got has got no intensity anymore. Can't press the game. Can't put people under pressure. Can't win balls and Not start scoring. counter attack. You've mm. got a, a back. You, no, not scoring, making chances, not scoring. You got a back four that want to play high, that want to get full backs forward, that have got no pressure in front of them. Rob, They're getting so easily done balls over the back that two centre backs this weekend, Gomez and Matip, both both not that comfortable on the possession. Rob, so you start building out the back. Your two centre backs, the two most prominent people who start the the, the build up, not confident, not. Uh, playing through the lines, all of a sudden, th there's a lot more to this. And, and, and I, heard, I heard the discussion with Danny Higginbottom, who talked about Mane, and there's absolutely no doubt Sadio Mane brought something and instigated something. But this is way more than more one than, man. Yeah, this is yeah. way more than one man that, that could change. If you, if you could get him or the best presser in the world, that doesn't stop, you no. know, far post defending that, but that Trent Alexander doesn't do. That doesn't stop defenders not closing down on, on people and, and, and giving themselves a little bit of space because they're pressing so high and people can play through at will. There's, there's so much wrong, Rob, that I wonder... So the point I'm getting to is, has Jurgen Klopp got the stomach to do the rebuild, to see out the rebuild? So, so this is what I feel like. I think yes, right? And, 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 that, and, and it mm -hmm. makes you think about it. Like, has he? I think yes, yeah. But there's mm. got to be, there's got to be, it's got to be two sides of Rob. The the ownership have got to step up and say, okay, Jurgen, all right, okay, let's are we are we ready to go again? And the fact that the owners are about to sell makes me think they don't yeah. really want to go there, and that's maybe one of the reasons why they're selling. Maybe a little bit like Man United, they see the money being spent with Chelsea, mm. they see the money, the new money coming into Newcastle United, and they see their teams that oh blimey. You get, we're going to need a new investment to compete with these guys because our fans want them to compete, yeah. compete at the very top. And that's a whole new level of investment to go there. 
Fenway Sports Group, yeah. and I kind of get it. They took it in a mess. Klopp came in there, it was a mess. They worked together over those period of years, better, 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 almost win, 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 win. And now, right, like, what, what we, are we going to go again? So it's a very good question. I think Klopp, yes, has the stomach for it, but I don't think the owners have. I don't think they've got the pockets for it. And that's the fear that Jürgen, the Liverpool fans must have that Jürgen, in the summer, see how they do in the Champions League, and, and if he gets the, 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 a hint that the money's not going to come, they're only going to look to buy in a couple of players, um, then he might say, I ain't got the stomach. And that's why I jumped on your answer. He's not a great manager of an average team. It, he doesn't want to do that. He doesn't want to be manager an average Dortmund or an average no. Liverpool. So that could be the moment. Um, I, I, it's just, I mean, it's just the, the, the only way around it is if he can find something, some injuries come back, they find a new groove. He, yeah, he, he, got the injuries. He, the, yeah, the, the, yeah. That's, but I think that now, to see that come back to where they were, uh, is getting harder and harder. It seems more distant and more distant. But it's not that far away. 92 mm. points. I mean, they almost won everything mm. last year. Uh, amazing, amazing drop-off. Right. Yeah, and it's just it's just. Could the crazy. Champions League? Could the Champions League be the saviour? I, I was yeah, talking to one of my, my, my Liverpool friends yesterday. Could you know they got Real Madrid two legs against Real Madrid, and, and could they stay in that competition? Could they go all the way in that one and and, and yeah. turn it round? I mean, that's yeah. kind of what Klopp's done in the past. But you, yeah, you're see right; it, it feels see like it. Yeah. there's there's some distance away from that now. Yeah. Let me uh, let me turn my attention to to Wolves, uh, Rob, because. Yeah. Um, Liked what I saw. Liked what I saw. A couple of goals early up in the first, I think, 12 minutes own goal from Matip and then uh, Craig Dawson, one of the new signings. So, four mm. the new signings started. Dawson, mm. uh, Sarabia, uh, Cunha and Lamina mm. all had an influence on the game. Very nicely set up in a, in a pretty much a 4-4-2. But, you know, everybody knows the roles, good positions. He Chang Wan got a... Um, looks like he might have a bit of a hamstring, but good um, quality off the bench, Rob. Uh, Raul Jimenez, Traore, uh, Matinho, Pedence off the bench. So quality, you know, is, is not in any way dropping the standard uh, when players came in. Well organised, good tactical shape. Had to withstand a little bit of a a uh, response from Liverpool second half when they came out. You can imagine uh, Klopp got uh, into his players a little bit. They had 15, 20 minutes when Liverpool had a little bit of intensity. Nunez had a shot well saved by Jose Saw, um, and that was it. They went on and, and got the third, Neves with, with a, a lovely finish. Um, and he's one of them, Rob. Again, I'll go back to the Sean Dyke to the beginning thing. Experienced, organised, tactically smart coach. Wolves will be all right. I, I get the sense. You see enough things and relationships and, and the right sort of structure to the team and it, it looks all right to me Rob with, with what they've got they've got enough quality to get themselves out of trouble and, and not not a great comparison but you know four new players in the team teams need to be refreshed mm. you know and, and that's where you know not going back to Liverpool but that that this shows you that a team new manager freshened up new faces yeah. and it yeah. can make it can make a lot of difference so no it's a good assessment mate again mm. you know hopefully next weekend I'll get a, a, a closer look at these two teams it's not always easy when there's there's yeah. five five going on at the same time um, okay jump let's jump to the next game Rob we're going to talk about and again this is another one of those wasn't it Man United versus Crystal Palace another one of those 10 o'clock yeah, games yeah Man United uh, Palace yeah I if, didn't get to see too much of this so yeah pieces, United yeah. obviously won the game Rashford scores again uh, 2-1 yeah. against Crystal Palace yeah. tough at the end holding on a little bit after Casemiro Rob got got mm. sent off um, yeah. let's jump to that what mm. did you think to that decision um, for the Red I thought it was a little harsh, mate. I Did thought you? it was a little harsh. I thought there's a number... Yeah, I thought it was a little harsh. I thought a number of players go in. I think the referee gets a still of him, you know, with their hands mm. in that in position. Slow Listen, I've got... Yeah. There's no argument... Yeah, there's no argument that once you see that, that it can be. It can be. But I, I just thought, if, if you watch that roll in normal speed a couple of times, it... Ugh. I thought it was a little harsh. Mm. I, I thought you could have got away with giving him a, a, a yellow for that. There was mm. so much going on. I, it didn't feel like it was that big a physical one, but we know if you put your hands in the face mm. in, in that situation, you, you're going to see a red card. And it's a three-game it's a three game loss, oh, Rob. Yeah, yeah. That's a big thing for a Man United team now who, mm. who are back in with a little sniff. Yeah. You know, they're only three points behind um, Man, Man City now and, and, you know, eight behind Arsenal, but... 
you know, you, they've um, they've got a little sniff at, at something, and, and Casemiro is such a huge player for them, not only just with what he does so well, and we, we've seen at Madrid, but goals he's come up with, Rob, and, and big moments for the mm. team when they've needed. So, um, so Bits is in, in, in the door. They're talking yeah. that, you know, maybe it's ready-made for him to come in and, and, and play his part. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I think with the Casemiro thing, and, and you know, we had a really good meeting with the referees, uh, PJML, this week and kind of going through yeah. the process. They showed us a process of, of VAR and, um, you know, they, the referee or well, the VARs are looking at different angles and they, there's different uh, replays they get and some of them are slow motion. Yeah. And when yeah. you've got somebody's hands around mm. the throat of a player and it's in slow motion, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it literally looks like he's... It, it, he's yeah. it looks a lot worse. So I, I know, yeah. I know yeah. what you're saying, Rob. Um I guess the, the the stock answer is if you put your hands around the the, the neck and the throat mm, of an opponent, yeah. um, I don't know how long you can get away with it if at all. Then you're running the risk, aren't you? And it it mm. is a shame. Um, but again, Absolutely. those those angles sometimes, you know, we had, we looked at different cameras and different angles, and then like I'm, I'm saying to our to our edit room, no, just just run it normal speed. I want to see it normal speed. And, but there's so yeah, there's so many yeah. pictures that came down that was slow motion with his hands on his neck there to see that he did that. Um, but anyway, listen, mm. it, it is it is what it is. He's going to miss for three games. That's him and Ericsson out, Rob. And Ericsson's such an important player for them. Um, but no, I didn't, yeah. didn't, get, didn't get a massive look at this game. But United keep rolling on. They no. keep rolling on. And, and, and Ten Hag's good three points, team and absolutely. the way they play is, is very, very good stuff. Yeah, very good stuff. Mm. Let's move it to Newcastle United, mate, because they've now got to uh, look forward to a League Cup final. For his, um, Cup final and... and Donkeys and, and chance to win the first bit of silverware that would put um, Eddie Howe in, in kind of all kinds of, of, of status that, that you know up in that part of the world to win a trophy. But uh, a one-one draw at home to West Ham United. Yep. How will Eddie and the Newcastle fans be thinking about about that? Um, I think they'd be a little disappointed, obviously, given the way they've been playing, Rob. But mm. I did look at this one. This was yeah. a later game on Saturday. Um, Okay, my, my, yeah. my thought process, my, my opinion of this one was, yeah, they didn't win. It was 1-1. They started off great and they couldn't capitalise. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's hard, mm. particularly after that midweek game, the emotional game of getting to a, a Wembley Absolutely. Cup final that the fans yeah. up there are mm. going crazy about. I understand between that yeah. game and that there is enough kind of recovery time, but also the, for the Newcastle to perform at their very, very best, which has surprised us all, is their intensity. And it's flat out. It's incessant yeah. attacking. And that quite wasn't there in this game, Rob. They didn't quite have that energy that they so often yeah. need, I suppose, to win games. And they've done it so effectively like all throughout the season. And the other part, so energy initially wasn't quite at the level. Going back to our blimmin... Yeah percentages yeah. Rob that where they've been playing at like 97 yeah. to 100 and this was probably 93 94 and it, and it and it just made the difference and also magical players the sparkling players Almiron and, and Sam Maximum got a start on the left hand side Rob yeah yeah none of their kind of dribbles or combinations particularly worked out so I just think a combination of those factors and also on the on the on the positive side of it they never looked like losing Rob it wasn't like they had a no, bad day no. at the office. They got a little bit lucky. You know, the goalkeeper had to make tons of saves. Mm. It, it wasn't that. They were in control of the game. Yeah, there was some opportunities. Of course, they give up the goal for Bakatar on the set piece. But in general, they mm. looked solid. They just didn't quite have that sparkle. And in some ways, it's understandable, given the games, given the cup, mm. and given the way they play is incredibly difficult physically. Yeah, I, I kind of... so. You know, my headline was, I just thought it was an important day to make sure they don't get beat. Yeah. I thought it was more like, because what's going on midweek and, and the emotion in the, in the terraces and on, on the pitch for those players, and, and Mikel Alteta talked about emotional um, spirit and control, and, and I just thought it, a Newcastle of old, or a Newcastle team not quite in, in the space they're in, would have lost 2-1 to West Ham. Would have mm. just maybe mm. got a goal early mm. and then dropped off and then... But like you said, it didn't look... You know, a, a draw look was a fair, probably a fair result. West Ham, you know, did really well, looked better organised and a little bit more at it than we've seen. Uh, Newcastle started the game on fire. Willock um, obviously had the goal disallowed. Yeah. Um, 
and, and threats going forward. So I thought it was 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 a, was one of those good days to get a point. It might be an important point. Of course, you'd want three. Of course, the standards are a little bit higher. But, um, you know, it's a good point based on the week they've had and the emotion and, and those scenes and, sure, a few nights out and a few uh, boozy heads of, of, of Newcastle playing the League Cup final against Manchester United. Just a word on Anthony Gordon, mate, because there, oh, yeah. there was a lot of yep. um, talk about him going to the football club. He started on the bench, came off, had a little look at him, played on that right on the left-hand side, cutting in. Had a couple of little moments, um, did one or two nice things, a bit of link-up play, had one or two efforts at goal. Um, do you see that as, 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 as good business? Eddie obviously fancies something about him, likes him. I mean, people are questioning his goal return, his, his assists aren't that high. Um, he had a little spell in the, in the season when a little purple spell. But do you see that as... Um, the kind of signing where we're going to be talking in Almiron figures uh, and Joe Ellington sort of raise of standard. I do, I do, Rob. I think he's I think he's mm. incredibly talented. I think he's incredibly talented. Now, can he grow a little bit emotionally? Probably, probably. And mm. you know, he's come a long way in the last eighteen months or whatever at, at Everton. But I think he's incredibly yeah. talented. I think it's a very very astute yeah. signing for the football club. I think the fans. Well, they already liked a couple of things that he did, Rob. He almost made an assist almost as soon as he got on the field. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I'm a fan of Anthony Gordon. And, uh, you know, if, if, we, if we expect what we've come to expect with Eddie Howe with some of his younger players and his attacking players, there's yeah, tons yeah. of upside that obviously he, he appreciates. That's why they brought him to the club. Um, so I like it. I like it a lot. And I think he he's adds to an attacking line um, that's got talent. But, I, yeah, I like it. So... I think he's going to be a really good signing yeah. for the club. Just one other note on them, Rob. Just I thought they did miss Bruno Gamarish a little bit in the middle of the park. He was suspended. He's out, missed this mm. game. The Brazilian yeah. in there that yeah, yeah. it dictates things. Also allows Sean Longstaff to get forward as a number eight. Longstaff played as a number six in this game where Bruno normally plays. So they had to change in midfield yeah. because yeah. of that. Actually, quite a lot of uh, players rotated in the midfield. Mm. So it wasn't it wasn't quite there. What what I, I do want to jump onto West Ham quick, Rob, because. They've, they've kind of jumped on this different oh, system yeah. now. That's three games now where they've, they've won the two of them. One was a cup game, I think it's Derby. And yeah. they've, got a, they've got a good yeah, yeah. point here. They look, West Ham look better again, healthier again in this mm. different system. I yeah. think you're seeing uh, Pakatar playing a slightly different, different, deeper role, which I like. Um, Naya Fager, the, the new Moroccan centre back, made a brilliant yeah. challenge. Liked didn't him, he? by the way. Yeah, mate. made a brilliant I liked challenge. Him, I tell you, he's a, he's a player. Yeah, the, the, the challenge on um, Callum Wilson, wasn't it? As yeah. Wilson got played through. Yeah, so and I think he, that's he better for back. them. Better yeah. for them. Three he, at the back's been, better. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. It looks more like we expect from Dave Moyes and West Ham, and just get a sense they might kick on a little bit now. Yeah. Uh, let's let's talk to the uh, Friday night football. Chelsea Fulham. Uh, Fulham already beat Chelsea mm. once this season. Um, Try to do it again at the Bridge. Game ended nil nil. Rob, um, I suppose you'd have to say it, it would be a better point for Fulham than Chelsea. Um, in terms of the game, Fernandez played, started a little bit of a different look to 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 the team. Hakim Ziyech. Didn't get his papers through to PSG. Then plays on the right hand side of, uh, uh, of the field for Chelsea. Um, well, where where do you sit with Graham Potter? And now the window's shut. Now he's got these number of players. Oh, is between now and the end of the season going to be a kind of finding out period for, for him and the players before I think we get the steps of right. This is what I'm going with. This is who I'm going with. This is Graham Potter's Chelsea. Yes, um, primarily for him, Rob, for Graham Potter. Graham Potter, mm. between now and the end of the season, like others have done in the past, when they took over clubs that were in a bit of a mess and they changed them around, I'm thinking of, of Jurgen Klopp immediately at Liverpool, there's got to be signs of progression, yeah, yeah. Rob. There's got to be signs of progression. We all understand that this job now is way harder than I think he probably expected it to be, given the amount of money, yeah. given the pressure that that adds, given the age of the players, given the fact that most of them coming in from different countries and don't speak the language, to try and sift his way through this group to try and find a good team isn't going to be easy. It's an incredibly difficult job, let alone how hard it might be to keep some of these players happy. It doesn't feel like a job for Graham Potter now. It, it just it feels like it mm. should be a... Carlo Ancelotti or a bigger name that that will instantly demand respect and will will 
I don't know. I don't know. Like, be a bit more comfortable of not playing in the team because there's a ton of players there. But yeah. I do say that because, yeah. you know, and I, I give Graham Potter, of course, early on now, you've got to give him a little bit of break about trying to find effective and really yeah. good performances. That being said, right, and maybe I'm contradicting myself a little bit here immediately, right, is that they got to ask more questions than that, Rob, haven't they? they got to create more than that against Fulham yeah, at home. I've got, with the I've players. Got, I've got, I mean, yeah. and, and let me just, one more comment, Rob, and again, this might be way off. I might be, I might be jumping the boat here totally. But at Brighton, if there was one, only one thing you could criticise Graham Potter for at that football club was sometimes the attacks were a bit fiddly. They're a bit tiki taka. They yeah. were they, and didn't penetrate and score enough goals. But while dominating the game, tell me, my friend, that we're not going to see a Chelsea version of that where they dominate, 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 but don't penetrate, get behind defenders, and ask, ask enough questions to score many, many goals. Well, you again, don't you've asked me the question I wanted to put out to you. So, when I watch Chelsea, Rob, and, and structure and personnel, and you know, back four and or back three, but back four in this one, and um, Fernandez, who looks, you know, so it's good, talented yeah. Yeah. player, and that. But, but, but what, what happens with, with, with Chelsea, and, and again, you have to think back to Brighton in a similar situation where. They almost slow down the higher they get up the pitch. Things mm. rub around the, 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 the top end of the pitch and not at the speed that other teams, certainly in Arsenal or City when they're flowing, or Liverpool when they're... They play with none of that speed intensity. I was watching the game, Rob, and I was thinking, like, there's a couple of things came to me where... And Mudrick, Mudrick is, looks like he's got, you know, decent pace. They're not a particularly quick team. So... Havertz mm. is your main striker. Is not a runner. No. Conor Gallagher is, is, is like mm. a, a strider, but he's not. He's not quick. Mm. Ziyech is not pacey. Modric can go a little bit on the outside. You know, most other some teams have that threat where people can run past the opposition. Well, that should be Modric. They don't have that. It? It, so, should be Mudrick. it should be Modric. He's the quicker. It should he's be Modric. But it, it doesn't. It doesn't look to me like it, it's difficult. Always oh, totally going to open things up. But the other thing, what I would say, Rob, is. The balls, the, the the speed of their ball possession and movement in the last third is too slow. It is is mm. far too slow, mm. and so people get a chance to, to re, regain position and, and close ranks and, and block off lanes and things. Which I just feel like that's something you know. We saw a little bit of Brighton, which which you talk about leads to goal attempts, shots on goals, more things on target. This is Chelsea, by the way. Yeah, yeah. You no, know, yeah, this is yeah. Chelsea played Fulham, Fulham at, at home. Fulham just come out of the championship, mm. you know, desperate to stay in the league. Marco Silva done a brilliant job. There wasn't a lot between the two teams, mate. Mm, mm, mm. There wasn't a lot between the two teams. Willian looks as sharp as a front player as anybody yeah. on the Chelsea team. Yeah. And they got rid of him how many, how many years ago? Listen, Robert, I just want to get, a, get your take on the bigger picture because we started this weekend talking about Chelsea because it was the headline. We're bringing Enzo Fernandez in for a, for a, for a British record fee. Yeah, yeah. I, I, my take was this. We've never seen this before. We've seen teams spend big. No, no. Blackburn Rovers, Chelsea and mm. Roman Abramovich. And it yeah. worked, Rob, right? It worked because, because they mm. buy the best mm. players at some of the teams in England. They're tried and tested. They get in Aaron Shearer. They buy, go and get Ed Nazard or, 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 or other. They, they go and buy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cost them a lot of money, but they buy great players they know are going to get. This is different because they don't and really know. And then they know. win. Then, and they then they win, win Rob, then the other win. thing. Yeah. yeah, the outcome is they win. Yeah. yeah. So the point is, isn't this an amazing financial investment gamble that these so-called stars of the mm. future are stars? And if they're not, and you don't play Champions mm. League football, then all of a sudden, does this project start to go, oh, this starts to smell pretty bad. And, 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 the, and maybe he isn't mm. going to be what we thought he was going to be. And maybe Mudrick isn't this. And maybe he's not that. And maybe yeah. he's just OK. And maybe mm. he's, a, he's a nightmare. It's, it's, maybe he doesn't settle them. It, it's risky given it, the young nature of them. Well, it's a gamble. Yeah, it's a gamble on the, the recruitment. It's a gamble on, you know, I, I, I was thinking about Kai Havertz, Rob, the other day. And I know he might be playing slightly opposition. But he came in with this, you know, one of the best players in Europe, goal-scoring record. You know, he was a new Michael Ballack in that kind of time. He's got real presence that about him. Hasn't quite happened in that room. Timo Werner's been uh, back out the door. Lukaku, that hasn't happened. There's I mean, tons you, of them. You, yeah. You, you, you're gambling, Rob, on these players. They, they, they're not sureties. They're not Category A-plus already. They're Category A 
uh, players who you're going to hope go to the next level with you and win things along the way. So, listen, it's going to be a really interesting next six months, 12 months. Uh, uh, this time next year at Chelsea, it's going to be really interesting in terms of where this club are, what they're competing for and, 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 and what they're looking like because, as you say, an incredible amount of money has been spent. And at the moment, it, 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 it's... I think for me, things are just in the balance. Mm, yeah, just just finally on that, Rob, to to, to reach at that point, if they had to go and if they had to go and got yeah. Harry Kane, if they had to go and spend the money and got Declan Rice and these sort of players, then you can yeah. see it. You yeah, can see yeah. a quicker quicker mm. road to titles. But um, they've gone and they they obviously yeah. want to produce the best football team on the planet. And they this they're investment guys. These guys they want to buy the club. It's a lot of money. Yeah. Invest a lot of money on it. Be successful and sell it. You know, a bit like Fenway have done a sports group with Liverpool and make a ton of money yeah, yeah. between that and there in the future. But, yeah, we're, we're after to see. I mean, full, full marks quickly on Fulham, Rob. Same thing. Great shape. Great yeah, organisation. Yeah. A manager yeah. that will, will, will be, in my, in my opinion, if you're a, a director of football, Rob, or a chairman or an owner of another club in that Premier League mm -hmm. and you want somebody that's experienced and he's kind of proven it now over a few different clubs, he's a Premier League manager. Yeah. Marco Silva might be one that's going to jump up in the next 12 months or so. What, what say you, sir? Sorry, Fulham fans, I'm not <laughs> buying mustos, get oh. Marco out. Marco's no, exactly I'm just where saying, he is. He I might, think they, he, they, is it, it, he's in London, he's got a good club, he's got a good size of club, he can have a good influence over the club. Marco's problem in the past is he's moved around a bit too quickly yeah. and, and, and not put roots down. I like. I think this this is a club that's a good size. It, it, it's got ambitions. He can put some roots down and 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 you know get Chelsea looking at where Brentford are and Brighton are and that kind. Of, that's where Fulham want to be um, and, and continue to to push the odds and and you know punch above the weight. So yeah, great uh, mention for Marco Silva and Fulham um, for Chelsea. Let's see what the future holds. Listen, mate, we're going we're to wrap things yeah, up. Uh, up. Just talk about a few of the quickly a few of the other, other results. Um, I just want to go to Nottingham Forest one Leeds in the first game today. Big game for teams uh, down at the other end of the table. Uh, Nottingham Forest, my friend, continued to find a way to win games. Ben and Johnson with a lovely finish uh, from a Gibbs White free kick. And I'm just going to go for it. My my underappreciated form of the week is the Nottingham Forest manager Steve Cooper, <laughs> and uh, you obviously know I've come with it. With, with a reel of stats to make sure that you cannot in any way disagree my underappreciated performance of the week. So Steve Cooper started his um, coaching career at Wrexham Academy, would you believe? Wrexham that's in the news for all the Hollywood stores now. Then moved on to Liverpool as an academy coach there. Got the opportunity to work with England under 16s and under 17s. Won the uh, FIFA World Cup with England under 17s, which was the Fodens and the Sanchez. Sancho's and the Gallagher's and the yeah, Brewster's, Hudson Adoy, that group that all came through. Gets a job at Swansea. I have some friends who um, is, took them to the playoffs twice. Goes to Nottingham Forest, having got sacked, who was second bottom of the league. Takes them to the playoffs, gets them into the Premier League. So he does a Bielsa job, but doesn't get the Bielsa credit, I don't think, from Forest fans. Has all the players... A million players on loan given to him, which he doesn't probably want them all. Gets on with that. And now has Nottingham Forest sitting 13th in the Premier League on 24 points. And they've not lost at home since September the 16th. Boom. <laughs> Mic drop. No, I can't argue with that, my friend. Can't argue with that, my friend. I mean, difficult job with all those players coming in. Mm -hmm. um, he might be another one that's going to prove certainly me wrong in terms of this season. I thought they'd struggle to stay up, given the amount of players. But but yeah. but uh, I'm trying to trying to gel a, a new team. <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah, a bit more pragmatic yeah. since I think they had a heavy defeat, didn't they? Four 0 yeah. defeat. Uh, can't can't remember where it was. Maybe was it Leicester? I don't know. Um, but they seem to be more pragmatic yeah. now. He's kind of got this diamond going in midfield. He's got so many options in the attacking players. Andrew, are you came in today, Rob? Mm. Experienced performer. Well, I yeah. kind of like that because he's okay, a fighter. Yeah. He's a fighter who's got a big mm. heart. He's a and worker. he knows him from Swansea, Rob. And he knows Talked him from Swansea. Talked about it. Yeah. Had a relationship from Swansea. Yeah. yeah. So I, I kind of like so, that. Yeah. Well done, Steve Cooper, <laughs> Forest. Yeah. Yeah. And just quickly on Jesse March at Leeds, Rob. Um, I know it looks bad. I know they are like staring at relegation fight again. 
Mm. Um, but I kind of liked some of the stuff today from Leeds. And I know it's a, it's a bit of a tough sell. I said it, Rebecca said, yeah. you know, would you be worried if you're a Leeds fan right now? Should they be worried about it? And I said, you know what? I kind of like what they're, where they're going with this manager. Weston McKenney, mm -hmm. we're going to see whether he can handle the intensity, the speed, um, yeah. and the mentality needed to be an effective midfield player in this league, which we know all about. We've, we've been there and done that. It is very difficult to, to perform in that area in the Premier League. We'll see that with Weston McKenney. Um, other good signings as well. Patrick Bamford worries me a little bit. I, my, my kind of thought process for them is assuming a fit Patrick Bamford and he is fit. Apparently, Manchester says he's in good shape, but he didn't look particularly yeah. mobile today. So disappointing. Mm -hmm. Loads of possession. Got to find a way to turn the possession into penetration, attacking, crosses, pullbacks, finishes, whatever. However, they got to do it. They got to. They got to try and do that. Um, they look, look, look yeah, more solid defensively now at the moment, which is better. And when you look at the numbers, mm -hmm. Rob, in the table, they generally are a team that scores goals but they've just got to pull it all together. I mean, Marsh said yeah. he is very happy now. He's got the strongest squad he's had at Leeds since he's been at the club. Today was a setback, but I think, I think they're going to be OK. Mm. Well, I think they've got United now, Manchester United, next two games. Two games, uh, Home yeah. and away, Manchester United. So, yeah. Tough, um, yeah. You know, let's see how the optics look in tough yeah. games. But, yeah, look... You know, he's got his players, he's got his squad, uh, window's shut now, he's got to, you know, do his coaching, the thing he does best, get on that training ground, mm. make sure they're nice and safe. Just wrapping things up, mate, uh, Leicester got a great 4-2 uh, winner at Aston Villa, uh, I'm sure Unai Emery won't be happy with that, Villa players will be doing a bit of work on the training ground there. And then two wins for two teams that we've come to expect, Brentford 3-0 against Southampton. We're hearing that um, the fans weren't happy with Southampton. Nathan mm. Jones, I know he came out strongly and talked about how he's going to change things and you know some of these players are, are going to have to do it his way or, or the high road for them. And Brighton won Bournemouth nil. Uh, does it be your friend Matoma again with it with, with, with a late yeah, goal amazing. enough to give Brighton another three points? Bournemouth in a bit of trouble, Rob. Um, Gary O'Neill and uh, Bill Foley, the owner, talked about this team that were guaranteed to stay up in an interview recently. Well. They got a bit of work on uh, now to to make sure that, that they don't get uh, caught adrift and, and keep things going. Uh, but listen, mate, that's been a a pretty long look at the, the weekend. It was a bit of a crazy weekend, really, when you think we started with an Everton win against Arsenal, and then Manchester City can't get you done against Spurs. So a weekend. Arsenal suffered a rare defeat. Liverpool got well beat, and Harry Kane. Got the goal-scoring record for Tottenham as uh, Spurs took care of Manchester City again at the uh, Tottenham Hotspur first stadium. Date for your diary. We're going to be back on Monday, February 13th. So make sure it's Monday, February the 13th when we review all the games from the weekend. And there's a big game that day, which is a very, now very interesting Merseyside derby. And we may have a special guest with us who is a former Liverpool fullback. Can't give too much away. You might want to guess who that is. But for now, I'm Earl. He's Musty together with the two Robbies. Thanks for watching and listening. Be safe. Stay healthy. It's a good night from me. And it's good night from him. Good night. Good night. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. For even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you over there.